Good morning and welcome in the name of our Lord Christ and welcome to this service of worship. It's good to see you this day and to be together in worship. Let me remind you of the attendance registers on the inside aisle end. If you'll find those and pass them along, we can have a record of who is with us at this hour. Also note that uh, on Wednesday of this week we'll be continuing with our Wednesday dinners and Lenten uh, evening services, so if you'd like to join us for dinner, uh, please do check the appropriate box as the pad comes along. That'll help us plan. We are enjoying our Wednesday night worship services. They're brief, <laughs> which everybody likes, but also uh, profound, I think, and a good opportunity for us to be together and to give special uh, focus to this season of the year which leads us to Easter. This coming Friday night, the Gordon Ears meet. Uh, fellowship is very important in this congregation. We uh, feel like we all know each other, and surely we uh, do mo most of us know most everybody else, but it's still a good opportunity for us to share at some depth. And so I uh, uh, hope that you can be a part of that group as well, Gordon Ears, this coming Friday. We anticipate uh, so many things coming, and you'll note those things coming in the bulletin, uh, activities related to the coffee project and the Holy Joe's Cafe, uh, our plans to go to Guatemala to place a water treatment system, uh, a variety of things which are upcoming. And please uh, do consult the announcements in the bulletin for additional information about all of that that's going on. God has given us the opportunity to be active in the name of Christ, and so we do rejoice. Uh, the strength for that activity, the encouragement, indeed the nourishment uh, of our souls comes when we worship. And so, together, let us worship God. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Repentance and faith are inseparable, and each is a gift from God, offered as the way to life in Christ. Jesus began his public ministry by calling his hearers to repent and believe. The motivation for repentance comes when we are aware of our sins. This is the supreme act of human freedom, to break free from the limits of selfishness and to turn and discovery of God's great glory. Repentance is never the cause of our being forgiven, but forgiveness is always accompanied by our thankfully turning to God. Lo, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Here in our souls.
The prophet Isaiah calls us to seek the Lord while he may be found and to call on him while he is near. Isaiah asks the wicked to turn from their ways and the unrighteous man from his thoughts. If we will return to the Lord, then he will have mercy on us and abundantly pardon us. Join me in praying the unison prayer of adoration and confession printed in the bulletin. Loving God, who invites and waits and expects your children to return to you, we confess in sorrow that we have not answered your call. We have not come home. We have not listened. We have not sought you. We have not forsaken our selfish ways nor our wicked thoughts. You have offered to satisfy us fully, but we have gone after lesser satisfaction. Now our souls thirst and our flesh faints, as if we were dry in a weary land. Forgive us, we pray, and open the way to life again. In our confusion, let us hear your clear direction. Guide us out of the wilderness, and make for ourselves into the gracious places for which you have made us. Amen. This morning we rejoice because our God's grace, our God's mercy is like a cool rain in the desert that makes us blossom, that gives us life, that gives us the opportunity to grow. This morning we rejoice because our God stays with us on this journey through Lent, challenges us and says, you have new life. Amen. Since God has forgiven us and given us a peace and a love, let us share that peace and love with one another through the passing of the peace. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please, please join with me in prayer. Lord, when you send forth your spirit, the scriptures are opened, our faith is renewed, and our hope is made secure. Send your spirit today, in this hour, in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. 
Now please read with me responsibly the Old Testament reading today from Isaiah 55. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Eat only the best, fill yourselves with only the finest. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live and I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and a commander for the people. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. For God will abundantly pardon us.
We turn also to our gospel reading for this day from the 13th chapter of Luke. The strange parable of the fig tree that does not bear and its relation to repentance in Jesus' mind. Let us stand together for the reading. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, but I tell you, unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I still find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. And this is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. Well, uh, when was the last time you heard a good sermon on repentance? (laughs) Uh, Repentance is not really something we gladly hear about. Probably we figure we've already heard enough, enough to last a lifetime about repentance, and we don't really need to hear any more. Repentance is such an awkward subject, and who needs awkwardness this close to spring of blooming? The Old Testament prophet Isaiah feels our pain. Isaiah is undoubtedly talking about repentance, but he's clever enough, artful enough, to use other words, words such as coming to God, listening that our souls might live, seeking the Lord, beholding, calling on the Lord, and so forth. Isaiah also mentions free food. Repentance by itself is an uncomfortable subject, but see, it comes with benefits, the waters from a refreshing well, wine and milk, bread and rich food, and all of it graciously given away, all of it for free. It's as if the plate glass windows at Kroger have fallen out and God's faithful people are eagerly being invited to take all the best foods home for, with, them, with them and no questions asked. That's not how repentance goes in the gospel reading, though. Jesus decides to frame a discussion of repentance in the most awkward way possible by using the context of a murderous tragedy, Herod crassly and irreverently slaughtering Galileans, and a deadly accident, the Tower of Siloam falling and people being killed. We naturally recoil from news of tragedies. But before we turn away, Jesus tells us the companion story about a poor fig tree that can't bear figs. No free food there, not even a fig. Just the hard, hard truth that unrepentant sin leads to destruction. Well, let's go back at least for a minute to the free food. Let's try things Isaiah's way. Look and see who is it that offers to let the people come and eat at no charge. Isaiah says it plainly. It's the Lord. 
and see also how Jesus' examples of the tragedies are redeemed. For who saves that lazy fig tree from being cut down? Yes, it's the Lord again. Jesus is just using a well-known biblical metaphor calling God the vine dresser or the gardener, but we know who he's talking about. These are the grace notes that surround our discussion of repentance. God feeds us. God saves us. God is always generous. God is good and God is great. The Lord will provide. There is always a second chance when we have not performed well. Heard that. We heard that. That the free food is an offer of life. That God nourishes us and protects the lives of those who turn to him. That's really the essential message of the Bible, if you think about it. But if obedience to God is life, then disobedience is death. A climatic choice is being required of us. Remember the seminal story of Moses and the people being taught in the book of Deuteronomy. As those people are about to enter the land of promise, the land of milk and honey, where they will be fed and protected by God, that place to which God has brought them by God's promise, by sacred covenant. At that point, Moses says to the people, See, God has set before you this day life and good, death and evil. Therefore, choose life. And where do you suppose all of us stand in this business of seeking life or death? Jesus says the Galileans that Herod killed and the 18 people who died when the tower fell were no more and no less sinful than anybody else. Death and destruction stalk all those who will not repent. Talk of life and death gives special poignancy, I think, to Isaiah's question. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor labor for that which does not satisfy? When life and satisfaction and comfort are offered so freely offered, why should we do or choose anything else? But of course we... We do choose wrongly sometimes, and that's the whole point. We are a danger to ourselves and others. We are like the fig tree, which does not meet the simplest definition of fig tree anymore, and so we defy the purpose of the one who planted us and who tends us, the Lord, Like that tree, our whole existence is now placed at risk and everything now comes down to the single gracious choice that God has offered us. How peculiar it would be to choose anything but life. And so it is that the fig is given, the fig tree is given another chance. Seemingly it's a last chance. And the gardener, who is God, is deeply and personally involved in offering that chance. So it is also in verse 2 of the Isaiah text when God says, Listen carefully to me and delight. And then also in verse 6 where Isaiah says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Seeking God is the answer to this tough human predicament of weakness and failure. And sin. Isaiah gives witness to God being on the move, God being dynamic, God being purposeful and powerful. Isaiah writes during a momentous time in history when the Babylonians who threatened and then exiled the Jews are now being threatened themselves by Cyrus the Persian and his armies. These are big international things that are going on while Isaiah is writing and those big international things will soon enough allow the faithful to return to Jerusalem. 
if we are faithful to follow, then we too will be given the opportunity to jump into the mighty stream of history with face full forward looking at the future. We will seek God while God may be found. That phrase is full of urgency and purpose. The Lord is found, after all, in worship. Remember, the people are returning to Zion, to the place of the temple. And the Lord is, of course, found in hope. The hope we all have that in everything and in every event, God's will is being done. This rushing, uh, uh, prodding, uh, insisting Lord of history is also the Lord of patience and constancy. See that God promises us an everlasting covenant in the Isaiah text, verse 3. Steadfast and secure, it says. God has not forgotten the love that was extended to David, nor to David's royal son, Jesus. This too is a grace note. The faith to which we are called is as urgent and powerful as the events of history around us, but it is also as eternal as God's goodness and God's perfection. Well, back to the free food. In fact, in Isaiah's offer of free food, we see the unmistakable reminder of God's earliest covenant with the first humans, that first offer of grace in the Garden of Eden. The human creation was, after all, fed there, and everything that was necessary was provided. But now, even beyond the Garden of Eden, God still is willing to provide for our needs, our physical needs, yes, but even more our spiritual needs. Remember, God's paradise was once our home. And God's love and God's providence were everywhere apparent in the garden. Now, as Isaiah writes, the people are about to return home again. Home from a bitter exile. Home to Jerusalem and to the place of the temple. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for things that cannot satisfy? Isaiah's question could be asked to any of us. Why do we reject what God has offered us? Why do we resist the offer of free food and amazing grace? The offer of a future is extended in our biblical text. In verse 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake their ways, and the unrighteous forsake their thoughts. And in Luke, the great gardener of paradise says, leave the tree alone and, and let me care for it and feed it. And if it bears fruit, well and good. If the walls at Kroger were to fall down and the food was suddenly free for all, free for the taking, just as in life, if it were suddenly time to take on the unimaginable abundance of God's blessing, that moment would be incredible to us. We would not know what to do. We would not be able to believe it. So Almighty God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, verse 8, and my ways are not your ways, says the Lord. The heavens, after all, are higher than the earth. There is an eternal plan that we do not fully grasp, and that's what makes repentance so difficult. It is simply impossible for us to understand all the good that God intends for us. The depth of God's kindness is deeper than any kindness we've ever received. Oh, everyone who thirsts 
come. And he who has no money, come, buy without price. There is no requiem printed for the fig tree uh, nowhere, at least not yet. Even if it's never born fruit, even if it's never done what it was expected to do, even if it was never really a fig tree, never really what it was created for, still the gardener has patience with all of us. After all, the possibility, the the possibility of repentance is not based on what we've done in the past or what we've not done. It's really based only on God's expectation of what we yet can do, what we can accomplish with these lives. Repentance is awkward since our vision is limited, but God's vision, after all, is limitless. We are offered what we cannot believe we are being offered. Since we cannot imagine the fullness of God's mercy, thanks be to God, we are given a sign and a symbol of it, the communion table, a place where God's providence for our needs is food, a place where that food is symbolic to us of God's willingness to feed us and protect us and and save us all for the sake of Jesus Christ. Here, after all, is spiritual food and it is abundant and we should receive it gladly. Come, come, everyone who has need. And thanks be to God this day. Amen. Let us all pray. Lord, we do not make our own way ahead easy. And so we do pray that you will uh, straighten out the awkward places and, and lead us more directly to you. Bless us to want repentance and forgiveness. And bless us to seek it from the only source, which is your goodness and grace. As we gather around the table figuratively, we pray help us to taste and see that indeed forgiveness is real. And these things we pray in Christ our Lord. Amen.
affirmation of faith this week is drawn again from a declaration of faith in the third chapter and is found printed in our order. Let us together say what we believe. God chose one people for the sake of all. To the world in its rebellion and alienation, God promised blessing and restoration. The Lord chose Abraham and his descendants as bearers of that promise for all. We acknowledge God's freedom and grace. Though we are unworthy, the Lord has made us his own in Christ. God has chosen us as his servants for the sake of the world and destined us to be his daughters and sons, giving us love and life, calling us to worship and honor him. Amen. Now, please be seated. On Tuesday, when Brandon Bradshaw was shot, his co-worker and our fellow church member, Andy Rudloff, asked to have a time of prayer for the whole community here in our sanctuary. We were glad to do this. God has responded to our needs, and it is in thanksgiving that we also try to respond to the needs around us. Our offerings reflect our common desire to do this. Thankfully, let us come before God with our tithes and offerings.
worship you, O oh God, through these gifts in our lives. May they be used to nourish others with grace and mercy. May the fruit of your Spirit be evident in all we do and say as followers of Christ. Amen. Please be seated. This morning we are invited to this table, not as strangers, but as those who are known by God. We are welcomed here with open arms and challenged to see how in an ordinary meal something can become extraordinary when God's light shines. Here at this table we are fed by the one whose light shines into the darkness and changes our lives. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he blessed and broke the bread and gave it to them, and then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Friends, this is the Lord's table, where our eyes are opened by the light of divine love, and we encounter the living Christ. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Your ways were not the ways of chaos, God of wonder and delight. And so with thoughts beyond understanding you spoke, and waters rushed through weary lands. You listened, and songbirds composed anthems for you. You crafted humanity in your image, your steadfast love a promise to us for all time. But we did not listen carefully to all you spoke. And so we spent your blessings on those temptations which never could keep us satisfied. So we would not be unaware of your continued love for us. Prophets came, calling us to stop and to listen to your longing heart. When we would not forsake our foolish ways, Jesus came your eternal covenant of salvation. So we join our voices with all those who seek you in every time and place, calling upon you with hope and joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and Holy are you, O God, our God, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your song of joy. When we had lost our way in the weary land of sin, he came to lead us to the waters of hope. When we could not hear your voice amid the jumbled thoughts of temptation, he came to witness the good news first sung in the broken places of your heart. When our ways, fertilized by fear and doubt, were unable to produce any life for us, he dug up the roots of death so that resurrection might be planted deep within us, blooming forever. From the generosity of your heart, you provide the gifts of the bread and the cup, charging us nothing, as your Spirit pours out love and grace on all who gather at the Feast of Remembrance. Here we are fed with that which is not bread, but the very life we need, so we can go forth to serve your people, here our thirsty souls are refreshed by the taste of peace and hope so we might speak out for all who are ignored by the world. And when we know no thoughts but yours, when we are gathered with our sisters and brothers in that place with you, we will sing the joy that is in the shelter of your heart, God and community, holy in one. Amen. The Lord Jesus, 
on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So that every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again in glory. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
And let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for drawing us here around this table, this special place, this place like no other location on earth. For indeed, as we go about our days, we seek after those things that do not feed us, but you feed us here. We spend our money on things which do not fully satisfy But here your grace and mercy abounds, and we are satisfied. We thank you for this sacramental meal, for the assurance it gives us of your love, for the memory it gives us of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, offering himself fully. And so we pray, bless us also to offer ourselves to you, and also to your work and will and purpose in our world. Thank you for drawing us together. Thank you for the goodness of our fellowship. We pray for those who have special needs, especially the sick. We pray for the family of Brandon and Bradshaw and the family of others who suffer illness or loss or death in these seasons. Fill us, we pray, with your own mercy that we might be assured of our forgiveness, but also be given the strength to turn in mercy to others. And hear us now as we pray together that prayer our Lord has taught us, and we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. blessed us that we might go out and be a blessing in his name. And so let us go in peace. And the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, each one, and abide with you forever. Amen.